Hey there, Aaron here again to bring you a breakdown for the recently buffed IE Breaker Incendiary. One of the more unique shotguns found in Helldivers 2 thanks to its lean into damage over time and saturation fire. Literally. But how good is it? Well, let's take a look at its technical specifications, damage breakpoints, and then talk about it. Before we get rolling, as is the case with all of my videos, all testing, thoughts, and opinions on the weapon are derived solely from playing Difficulty 9, as it's the only difficulty I play on. Alright, so the Incendiary Breaker is a magazine-fed burst-fire shotgun, best fired on the semi-automatic setting for better control and fire rate. The shells loaded into this weapon are filled with magnesium instead of lead pellets, which in turn discharges flames and sparks towards your enemies, similar to modern-day Dragon's Breath shells. A very unique design and concept in comparison to most other weapons in Helldivers 2. This weapon sports a serviceably clean optic you will never ever use as it also has no choke and an absurd spread pattern, causing the 12 pellets discharged by this weapon to be fired on Crimsica and impact all the way on Astanu. Unless of course you practically stuff the barrel of the weapon into the head of your enemy, it's relatively impossible to get the max damage inflicted on just one enemy when firing at anything beyond 15 meters. This in turn makes the weapon very bad at killing single tanky enemies, but pretty good at damaging many targets at once. More on that later. The damage in the most recent patch has been buffed by 5 per pellet. As the weapon fires 12 pellets per shot, the damage on its in-game sheet has increased by 60, from 180 up to 240, a 33% increase in overall damage. However, it still lags behind several of Helldiver's most damaging weapons such as the Breaker, the Punisher, and even the Slugger after its nerf, which all managed to beat this weapon in raw power alone. This issue is extended upon by the difficulty that comes with getting that 240 damage to actually be applied to your enemies with such an absurd spread pattern, making it not uncommon for half of your shell to be discharged off into space or the dirt, instead of it into the beating hearts of our enemies. Normally, this would be a death sentence for the gun on its own, but its unique trait of being an incendiary weapon helps mitigate this to some degree by applying a burning damage over time effect, which... This is where a lot of my time ended up being spent. I wanted to know how much damage this burning effect actually did. It was buffed in the latest patch by 50%, but how much did enemies burn for? Well, after five very painful hours of testing with my community discord that constituted shooting each other, lighting ourselves on fire, burning ourselves with acid, shooting bugs, lighting bugs on fire, and lighting bugs on fire while shooting them, we have come to the conclusion at the Ministry of Truth that this damage over time burning effect does exactly 22.5 damage per tick after the recent buff from all sources. Meaning before this patch, it did 15 damage per tick. This damage is then dealt up to five times when applied to an enemy, which is less time than we burn. It does not stack with itself. However, the burn duration will reset each time a burn is inflicted. The damage is also specifically dealt to the body of the enemy, which is an important clarification as all enemies in Helldivers 2 have separate health pools for each limb. This damage is only reduced to enemies with torsos weak to explosive damage, such as the Charger, Bile Titan, and strangely, Scavengers, only taking 2.25 of this damage per tick just to name those resistant in the bug faction. This brings our theoretical damage total if we were to attempt to defeat an enemy through torso damage alone, where we connected all 12 pellets with said torso, then let them cook for 5 ticks, you would be dealing 352.5 damage per shot, assuming a red hit. This is not realistic, but let no one say that I wasn't thorough. Now you may be asking yourself, why put myself through all of that to deal 22.5 more theoretical damage than the breaker to a singular enemy? Well, personally I wouldn't, but let's look for a bright side. This damage over time effect will deal 112.5 damage to a singular enemy if we were to let it burn for its full duration. And the duration of this burn is reset each time a new pellet is received. Meaning if your intent is to shoot a screen full of enemies, not just a single one, you will increase the DPS of this weapon exponentially per additional target you set on fire, allowing this weapon the niche of being stronger when clearing out large groups, and being generally mediocre when fighting one-on-one. -on -one. This ironically means you want to be firing this weapon from further away to maximize how many targets you injure per pull of the trigger for the most benefit. I'm not saying the Incendiary Breaker's potential brings it above any other weapon specifically, I'm just informing you on how to get the most benefit out of this weapon specifically in a vacuum. This strategy is also rendered very ineffective against the enemies mentioned earlier, which, hilariously, 
often leaves the scavengers crawling after you while the hunters, warriors, and even brood commanders have burned away. The amount of time and effort it would take to break down just how we reached this conclusion would be a video all on its own, which I will make if this video reaches 3,000 likes, as I'll then know people are sufficiently interested in this topic. This video, however, is about the Incinerary Breaker specifically and not the ins and outs of fire damage. So in the interest of remaining concise, let's leave it at that and move on for now. The last few technical aspects of the gun are thankfully nowhere near as complicated as the damage over time mechanic, the Incendiary Breaker. Thankfully, packs plenty of heat with its 25 round drum magazine of which you can have 6 of for a total of 125 shots. Which, if you're not careful, can go by extremely quickly if you get carried away. With its semi-automatic high rate of fire, as I mentioned above, you really want to let them cook if you want to make your ammo last. Even if your overall TTKs will be lower than hammering the trigger, Swapping targets constantly to reapply that dot will keep up and kill rates with spamming, while also keeping your ammo economy much more manageable. The ergonomics of the weapon are relatively sharp and responsive as well, so no complaints for me in this department. The reload time is also very snappy, which is nice. Okay, so we've concluded the technical breakdown at last. We're now going to move into a modified version of my breakpoint breakdown compared to my previous videos. We're going to instead be talking about how effective the incendiary breaker is against each enemy individually, but with the idea in mind that we will let these enemies burn for the duration of our damage over time in between our shots. As in a realistic scenario, we will want to be swapping targets between each of our shots to maximize our overall DPS against a horde. This will give a more clear performance against these enemies than if I had just told you how many shots it takes when spamming the trigger. To kick off, I'll also be addressing the fact the Incendiary Breaker has only light penetration, meaning it becomes very ineffective or relatively weak against several different targets I'll address as we go along. First, the Scavengers, as this one is a bit odd. Due to their small size often soaking very few pellets at ranges we want to be firing on hordes, this little guy will often be the last critter crawling towards you during a breach, in part also due to the fact their bodies are resistant to our damage over time effect of burns. Expect to take a few shots against small groups of these, or barrel stuff them to make sure they go down. The fact I'm breaking down the scavengers of all things with almost a paragraph of detail means we are not off to a strong start. We do then recover a bit here, however, as you can expect hunters who catch just a few pellets to shortly then after burn out. As these have a tendency to make up the bulks of the hordes you'll be firing into with this weapon, we can safely at least take this as a W. Warriors are not much different, being taken out if a decent portion of pellets land in their head in just one shot, or burning out through their body's HP pool in just one or two. Brood Commanders are a bit of a pain point here, as they will have to be thrown into the slow cooker for typically about 4 shots, taking a whole 20 ticks of fire damage before they'll eventually go down. Either that, or spamming the trigger into their head region for 7 shots on average. The Stalkers give this weapon no breathing room to play the waiting game or horde breaking game with its damage over time demanding a DPS check in which you spam the trigger. This often kills thankfully within about half the magazine, leaving you the victor if you brought a personal shield. If you didn't, Expect to be bullied, as is the case with most weapons lacking stagger against this enemy. Bile Spewers prove a difficult enemy to bring down with the Incendiary Breaker, taking many shots to their torso, as it's the only part the Incendiary Breaker is able to penetrate, making this target unfortunately ideal for a weapon swap unless you are prepared to pay the price in your ammo economy. Something has seemingly changed with Shriekers and their relationship with fire in this patch, causing them to no longer burn out from a singular ignition, but taking up to three usually dying from raw damage before this can happen. Still an easy target for the Incinerary Breaker, but not nearly as trivial as before. Hive Guards are difficult to land many pellets on thanks to their faceplate absorbing the damage. Thankfully, they'll burn out as part of the horde after just two or three applications of your burn should they catch any of the pellets to their exposed flesh. Chargers are a hard no-go here as their bodies resist the burn and take very little damage from the few pellets that land when not barrel stuffing them. You can deal a small amount of damage to the legs from behind, but just swap to your support weapon realistically, unless you're prepared to pay with more ammo than you can even carry. No, I'm not kidding. Bile Titans? Yep. Nope. As you'd expect, it's only going to take damage through its belly breaking within about half a magazine. And again, it's very resistant to this fire damage, making this enemy a target for stratagems or support weapons as well. Alright, that's it for the bugs. Moving on to the automatons. If you knew where this was going, you've seen my previous videos. Don't. I don't wish to waste your time telling you about the potential that does not exist for this weapon against this faction, as it's aggressively terrible against them for many reasons. Let's leave it at that and move on to my conclusion. 
So, how good is it? Well, in my opinion, the Incinery Breaker is a niche, interesting weapon able to deal with the Terminate threat in a fun way overall, which does provide a unique experience to the user other weapons cannot, thanks to its slow cooking strategy and utilization of damage over time. The weapon handles the lesser enemies, who do make up the majority of the terminated hordes you'll be firing into. However, it struggles greatly when firing one-on-one -on -one with the more serious threats in the faction, while being completely ineffective against others entirely. However, this weapon does thrive on its inaccuracy and promotes a mobile playstyle that requires little to no precision, which is conducive to having a good experience against the Terminids, as you want to be as mobile as possible. This overall leaves this weapon feeling mediocre for most, but for those that enjoy its high saturation and damage over time mechanics, you'll likely enjoy it for many battles to come. Thank you for watching till the end, and have a wonderful day. See ya! And now, another helpful tip from General Brash. Aravin has gone above and beyond to tell us with an unnecessarily high level of detail exactly how strong our incendiary breaker is. For his painstaking efforts, I'm ordering all active Helldivers to like, comment, and subscribe to his channel. Failure to do so will result in another indirect buff to the Hulk's flamethrower. Brass tactics. Use them or die trying.